Hello and welcome to a pair of Dice Lost podcasting channel. My name is Brendan, my pronouns are he, him, and I'll be your storyteller for this game about living gods on the wrong side of the law. Joining me for this game is... Hey there guys, my name is Tyler, my pronouns are he, him, I'm going to be playing uh, Ricky, the fire affected street exorcist. Hi everybody, my name is Christina, I will be playing Elion. My pronouns are she, her, and Elion's pronouns are they, them. They are a water aspected investigator. Hi everyone, my name's Cody, pronouns are he, they, and I play Amalar Divine, the air aspected shady businessman. Hi, my name is Britt, and my pronouns are she and her. I play a wood aspect named Rush Ferris, who has a ferret familiar named Zeke. Together, they specialize in archery, larceny, and dance. Hi, I'm Michaela Sheher, and I'll be playing Tarali of House Regara, an Earth aspected leader of a small military force known as the Tyrants, who collects the books for the gang. And this is Exalted, like a dragon blooded. Act 3 A Hundred Kingdoms, A Hundred Heresies. So when last that we left off, uh, Ricky had uh, just taken out a dictionary and asked Falar to teach him how to read. Uh, you guys had made it into Great Forks after a very tense situation at the docks that was amazingly enough resolved peacefully, despite the fact that Ferris had about a minute left to live. Yep. Now, as that we are here. You all are in Great Forks. You all have been introduced to the Rush's mother. Um, everything is kind of... Everybody has kind of started to settle in. How long do you all think that you're going to be hanging out in Great Forks before... Uh, are you guys planning on making a, an extended stay here? Or is the plan to kind of come, come in and then get out? As soon as that, like, uh, business is done. Or are you guys planning on making it kind of like, uh, kind of like how Chiroscuro was kind of like a base for a bit with y'all before? I think we need to evaluate, like, where else we need to go, realistically. Okay. That is completely fair. Because Great Forces is already kind of established, so uh, I imagine it's mostly licking our wounds, collecting our stuff, uh... Catching up everybody here on what happened. Buying a war strider. Oh, buddy. You don't buy war striders. Nah, you steal them. War striders buy you. Then that sounds like that everybody... uh, So, okay, so what's going to end up happening since you all need to get everyone on the same page? Um, A general call to all the local family heads is going to go out uh, to meet at the Resh Manor within the next few days. This this general call is going to... uh, Basically, the... Uh, Bilar goes and talks to the, the his advisors underneath him and the people who are uh, sorcerously able uh, begin sending out uh, either demons that can uh, move quickly across creation and bring messages to people in the lo- in, in nearby locations to meet up or using uh, simple linguistics charms or even something like wind carried words, which is a sorcerer spell that lets you basically communicate over long distances. Uh, luckily due to uh, well, this being the family's base of operations and cheers hero, not no longer being fit for them, uh, people were kind of already on their way here, so to speak. Uh, and yes, to answer your question, Tyler, you, you do know how to read now. You, it might take you a little bit to, uh, figure out exact words. Like you're not going to be speed reading like alien can, but, uh, you, if someone puts some, uh, if someone puts some river speak or fire or flame tongue in front of you, you can read it. Oh, hell yeah. I'm educated now. Okay. 
comparing Elion to anybody's reading speed is not fair because they know like five different languages. Because you know languages doesn't mean you can read. Also, uh, I cannot read River Speak because I can't speak River Speak, Brendan. I only know Flame Tongue. Oh, right. That's right. Shit. Don't get ahead of yourself now. <laughs> don't, let your expect- don't, don't let your expectations get too high. <laughs> If they put Flame Tongue in front of you, then you'll be good to go. I have tamped down my expectations. Well, let me tell you one thing. When uh, people start arriving, I will make sure I am in an area where I cannot be jumped. A good call. A very good call. I don't want to be jumped. Are you just going to dress up like Zeke? I could. And then, like, once the... The news is revealed that Bilar's alive. I just rip off the mask. It was me all along. Uh, to let you know, the news is being revealed that Bilar was alive in the message. Okay, good. You, you don't have to, you do not have to continue to hide. Good. Or maybe I'm lying to you. Who knows? You, you could just ask your brother what kind of message is being sent out. Ferris is still going to be, like, on edge and aware and looking out to make sure she doesn't get jumped. That is completely fair. As the the people begin to assemble, uh, the heads of families and uh, or their messengers as they are brought in. um, Every family here has a representative of some kind. Whether it is the actual uh, uh, family head or if it is a uh, a captain is kind of up for uh, debate. So to let you all know, uh, obviously the the Resh family is being represented by uh, Fular. Uh, well, yeah, Fular since Bular is their uh, is technically the the head of the whole clan. The uh, Kajak family is being represented by Grim Breeze. That's the uh, that's the kind of uh, the, the person that we don't know what he looks like. Yeah, yeah, the the sneaky person who you don't have any idea of what they look like. Uh, no one has uh, ever seen them. Uh, they are there are rumors that go about them that they are fey touch. No one even knows their gender and they speak in a very androgynous tone. They essentially kind of live in cloaks upon cloaks upon cloaks. But this cloaked figure does make an entrance. Uh, uh, the matriarch Goesitar Sorrow uh, makes an appearance. Um, Baronado Jalin makes an appearance. For the Izath family, the one who that uh, Manami is a uh, is a uh, I- I- yeah is, is a part of um, their uh, their matriarch actually does not make uh, does not make a uh, an entrance. It is actually um, sorry, I am just going through. I mean, Manami could be there. <laughs> he is on the ship. Actually, yeah. Mana- you know what? That's a good call. Thank you, Britt. Uh, Manami is the only one from that family who is there. Um, the reasoning for this is unclear at the moment. I bet you it's because the matriarch feels bad for telling Manami that I did it and that she saw me when in reality she didn't. I'm on to her, Brendan. Damn, Britt was right on to me. <laughs> she knew that she'd be super embarrassed. See, or I knew what was in going trouble on. for blaming you when uh, you didn't do it, even yeah, though say, or a doppelganger, <laughs> even though a doppelganger did it in your place to make it look like it was you. Either way, I don't trust her anymore. And then, uh, in place of the Gagari family, is kind of a scrawny. Uh, Kind of, kind of sneaky looking guy who that uh, Ricky and Divine once met at the opening of a host club. A man named Tepit Min. That's the one we cornered in the bathroom, right? Yeah, he's the yeah he's the one who you had uh, bathroom conversations with. Well, I don't remember this. <laughs> this was way back in Act One. I remember the name. I remember the name. 
That's when we were trying to get the property and y'all cornered them. Oh, was that the guy who's like... not get the property. Is that the guy whose family is like a bunch of killers? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now I remember. That's the big uh, meatball dude that I believe tried to threaten or did threaten Divine. And then saved our life? Yeah. Yeah. Did threaten Divine and then also saved y'all's life. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you can take a wild guess as to where their leader is. He's busy. Probably still in Shiroskiro. Probably. Carson's just out there fighting the good fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, between that, the advisors, and anyone else who uh, comes to join, um, Resh Katala, uh, Ferris and Bilar and Falar's mother, uh, kind of uh, rolls out a uh, fairly ornate map of creation that uh, has kind of, uh, they have had drawn up in the time since you all came here that shows the, uh, the mostly the scavenger lands area. Uh, so like that kind of like plains area near the uh, middle right of the uh, the center of the map. All the way down to about Chiroscuro and the the burning sands in the south. There's a little bit to the east and the north, and you can see just the edge of the uh, the Blessed Isle in the sea there. But mostly, they kind of keep everything contained to this particular uh, like area where that you would find things of interest. Uh, they begin assembling small little uh, wooden soldier figurines uh, on the map, uh, notating uh, the information. Uh, question for you all, actually. Uh, do you all want to want to have given them all the information or do you all want to give do you all want to give them the information? Uh, I assume for the sake of time, we just kind of while everybody's gathered, just tell them what's going on and what happened. That way we're not repeating it. Already have given it to them. Okay. So having already uh, in a previous off-screen scene given everyone uh, the information regarding your knowledge of Chiroskiro and its current and current happenings, they begin placing uh, little wooden soldiers and bits and bobs around Chiroskiro. Uh, they have designated a couple of them as like, oh, here's here's the hostages to uh, for like things like the Tricon. Here's uh, a, a bunch of the uh, the Wild Hunt. And then they have like one rather or I'm sorry, they have two rather large uh, figures. One of them is to represent the War Strider and the other one is to represent their war leader. And then, as they kind of move everything up, they kind of begin adding on uh, along the path that you guys all took. They they add on the uh, the airship up in Lookshy and a small little uh, wooden figure that uh, someone has skillfully painted a little wrench onto to uh, put uh, near Lookshy, as well as a little wooden like airship and everything uh, along the riverlands. They 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 put a large block to show the manse that you all have acquired. And then near Great Forks and everything, they put uh, stuff for, uh, well, you all who are currently gathered there. And they begin marking things uh, a little bit more expertly with numbers. They they, they have much more information on their own people than they do uh, what is down in Chiroscuro. And as they wrap that up, they then begin going towards... Just a little bit, uh, uh, so a little bit further southwest of the river that you all came up here on, uh, is Nexus, and they begin putting, uh, differently colored forces for different mercenary houses that they know exist within Nexus. And finally, there is one extraordinarily large cloaked, uh, wooden figure that stands above all of them. Uh, that is marked as the Emissary of Nexus. Without any more information that you all have or can gain from allies, 
that that is about where that everything stands. Uh, they they know that there's a wild hunt, a war strider, and someone uh, controlling everything down in Chiroscuro. They know about how many mercenary companies are currently in Nexus, and they know exactly what's going on in Great Forks. With the stage set, conversation begins. They all kind of look to you all. Uh, Reshwar begins speaking. You all were at ground zero. I was simply on the boat, ready to go. Uh, you all have a better idea of what's going on than I do. Uh, your advice would be much better than anything that I could offer. And he kind of like swings his gaze over to Tarali and uh, general, your advice uh, regarding how to move troops when necessary will be invaluable. Yeah. Anything that I could do to help, I'd love to. Um as far as moving troops around. <laughs> of course, of course. So, this person infiltrated our ranks from a low-tier organization, stole all of our goods. We've only just begun to re uh, regain some of our lost wealth. Uh, and he kind of like motions over towards divine uh with your help of course uh divine it is much appreciated everybody knows if you want to make money you go into business with house regara so it seems and uh you you do your own uh your own house well uh proud as well it seems oh speaking of which uh anybody uh Got any leads on? I need to kill some Fey. You need to kill some Fey. Yeah, you know my uh, wife to be after in a couple decades uh, needs gossamer sales, and apparently, I got to kill some Fey to get to it. They nod and kind of think for a moment. Ah, yes, uh, we there are a few middle marches throughout the uh, throughout the scavenger lands. We can uh, possibly track one down and you could. Uh, uh, we, we could uh, either send a contingent of people out there to deal with it themselves, or we could give you the exact. Uh, the exact location and you and your crew could go and deal with it. Good, because I think uh, I think we want what she needs me to get the gossamer sales for. We definitely are going to want that. Fair enough. And this uh, betrothed of yours is uh, useful in what? What exactly does she do? All right, excellent. Then we will put that on the list of things to find for you all. A good middle march for you to uh, go in and harvest from. <laughs> I'll put out feelers. Yeah, because I figure we've got the mants producing hearthstones that are tied to the scavenger lands, because you know it's the mants from the scavenger lands. Uh, and I'll ask Dunstan when he checks in figure if anybody knows anything about stealing notes it would be him so someone on uh someone on on parchment writes down you know find a middle marches uh that they kind of they don't draw on the map just yet but they kind of like put a uh, a marker down somewhere in the scavenger lands to be like mm, we think it might be here so speaking of your betrothed soon to be wife, do you think she could make us a flying war strider or two or three? I mean, if if it flies, probably the question is the time constraint and the materials. You uh one one of the sorcerers there uh pipes up. You have her name, correct? I can send a message for you and get one back uh, by the end of this meeting. 
Yeah, it's a good name too. I I, I will need the name if I'm to send the message ac- around. Yeah, divine. He's gonna need the name if he is to send the message. You know. Whoa! Who taught the hot concubine my name? Yeah, laugh it up. Laugh it up. Oh, that's a good point. Hey, hey, guy. Uh, when you write that message to her, tell her that Ricky asked special and put a little winky face at the end. It'll do good. Elian's just gonna kind of sigh and look at whoever they're speaking to and say, uh, it's to be sent to Navar and Vita. They bow their head uh, to you, Elian, and then look to you and go, was, uh, the slum- was the slumbering hound making a jest or not regarding the winky face? I don't know. I trust you to make the right decision, Scribe. You, you, you're good at your job. I believe in you. Uh, let us know when we hear back from the, uh, from, the, 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 Brendan, do they know that she is an exigent? Um, you know, a lot of other people don't know exactly what that, that means. It's, it's kind of a rare enough term. Actually, mm, in Great Forks, though, it's not rare. Yeah, I would say if anywhere would know what an exigent is, I would think it would be Great Forks, because yeah, it's when the you, gods. When you hear back from the exigent of the god of aviation, do let us know. That'd be great. Thanks. Also, it's artificial flight, not aviation. What do you... whatever. Aviation... <laughs> I, I read that word in a book yesterday, thanks. That's what aviation means, jackass. Oh, you can read now. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Four looks up. I had a dictionary from how to speak flame tongue. It it was a nice night. Day. Afternoon. At the park. He's very teachable when you get to know him. Ferris just gonna chuckle softly to herself. Hey, hey. I got a, I got a, I got a cred to keep up here. For like, I can't just go telling people I'm teachable. It's okay. okay. Everybody, Ricky's fucking dumb. I've been trying to teach him for the past, like, year. A- anyway. I like, think he's trying to say he wants to be more than just a pretty face. Are we done? Can we move on with the meeting now? Anything else? Uh, th- that person uh, not- nods to Ricky and everyone else, and you see them, like, go kind of off to the side. You, uh, The sorcerers here see the telltale gathering of sorcerer smotes. Uh, they expel it in a, in a language that is then uh, kind of flung to the wor- flung to the winds. All right, yes. Well, if they have that entire wild hunt, and uh, with what you said about... Uh, Catholic Iria being in charge, that's going to make things very hard. She's a she's one of the most seasoned uh generals that the realm has ever produced, uh second only to uh Tepe de Java. And her blade is not going to help us any, unfortunately. It's only going to make it worse for us. Yes, the fact that she has the volcano cutter is going to make things very Difficult. Uh, legend of its power is uh, told far and wide throughout uh, the scavenger lands. It has been the, in some cases, singular reason for the winning or loss of certain battles, let alone even in one case, a war. She is not someone to be taken lightly. Uh, out of game question, did we ever, do we know why she, like, Iria decided with Moya? Was it just money? Did we ever find that out? Um, you guys have not found that out. Uh, there was a rumor going on that I believe that you all heard from Vinif Seek, uh, saying that she had literally gone to the realm and bought the satrap of Chiroscuro, as well as the legion that uh, Iria commands. Got it. I just couldn't remember if we if we knew the reason for that or not. There is certainly rumor going around, but the actual reason uh, from from the horse's mouth, so to speak, has not been determined. 
keeping uh keeping area aside are there any other uh generals that you would know of that uh she has under her command or not area but uh area being the main general um uh, this secretary what was her name again moya moya yes uh are there any other forces that you all know of that are under her command to that that we might have a little bit more information about Brendan, uh, she had like a whole bunch of power armor guys in the palace, right? Yes, she did. What are those called? Uh, that is called uh, Ashigaru armor. How many? How many did I see? I want to say that you saw twelve. So it's a pretty safe bet that she has a a not small amount of Ashigaru armor at her disposal. Uh, yeah, I saw that when I was in the, uh, in the palace. She also might have some, uh, either she has shapeshifters on her side, or they're just doing it to mess, but more than likely on her side. When you say shapeshifters, do you mean, uh, from the Feywilds, or do you mean the, uh, um... All of them kind of look a little bit uncomfortable as they kind of uh, look between uh, Bilar and an empty space at his side. That place where a shapeshifter used to sit? Yeah. I am I personally am not ruling out either. However, if I were to take an educated guess, I would lean more towards fey-oriented um, mutations. Understood. We'll do our best to account for either. Uh, luckily enough, we have uh, one of uh, uh, Jolin kind of pipes up. <laughs> luckily enough, you all have decided to have it, it's an open secret. Bilar. Uh you've made your bed with a shifter with a anathema. It's an open secret. Everyone in this room knows. Yeah, we got shape shifters at home. Ricky's gonna like gasp dramatically but clearly sarcastically. Uh Jolin kind of looks between uh kind of looks between uh Bilar and then Tarali with kind of like narrowed eyes and goes, You both have done a fantastic job of keeping this family. Oh, and also Ricky. You all have made fantastic choices in keeping this uh, criminal organization uh, free of, well, let's just say uh, mm, racist tendencies. I feel like that you've opened up a lot of doors for us in recent memory. What did you look at me for, Brendan? <laughs> you broke out your best friend from prison who was an exigent. Oh, that's true. I did do that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> what did I do? You recruited a solar. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah. He's looking at you guys. Not I'm me. I'm sure I'll get you with something. I was about to say, why didn't he give Cody a hard time, <laughs> motherfucker? Because I didn't marry the exigent. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, wait, no, you're right. They also do kind of... They, they very vaguely narrow their eyes at, at Define and just go... We're keeping an eye on you. Because my look shy and racism balances out the not racism of getting with the exigent. Cody, what the the divine has isn't racism, it's classism. Don't you say that to me in that tone of voice, peasant. (laughs) Oh! Anywho, uh, you know, I'm getting kind of hungry, guys. Anything else? Uh, it's like, I don't know. But it's it's enough, right? If you all have any other things to uh, add on, please don't hesitate. Basically, what I'm saying is like we're gonna I'm I'm gonna just make like a little MS Paint pull out of this map and just be like, here's where your side quests are. So there you go. That's my homework. It's my homework for the next month is to give you a, a map with all the side quests. 
Um, Elion is gonna kind of when all people are talking maneuver to get close to Bilar and not loud but not trying to hide it um, just ask Bilar where's uh, your companion at by the way oh um, Seek is uh, enjoying the uh, is enjoying some of the, the food served in the temple district Okay, I may need to speak to them at some point regarding some matters for for points of clarification. Yes, of course. Uh, if anyone needs to speak with them, I can uh, have them summoned at a, at, a, at a few moments' notice. It's fine. I can walk over there and speak to them myself. Of course, of course. The group kind of, I guess, breaks so to speak. There's a couple of things that I want to get to. So my question is, who would like a scene first? I feel like I always go first. So I'm going to let someone else go. Okay. So, Tarali, I have a question for you. Would you like to have the scene of the tyrants hanging out in the temple district? Obviously, other people can join in with that. Or... Would you like to have the scene that I'm going to allow you to be there with Elian, which is the hello again, my new old friend, which is uh, the sit down conversation that I wanted to have between uh, Elian and uh, the, the, the high noon stranger. You know, because Elian never got to actually talk to Idris after everything. Nope, because I was like, hide him and don't tell me where I have plausible deniability. Sure, let's get the gang all together again and reintroduce everyone. <laughs> so, uh, the one with you and Elian, then? Sure, we'll do uh, tea time with Elian. <laughs> okay. Actually, you know what? If you want, I can kind of uh, put both of those scenes kind of together. Uh, sure. I mean, I'm going to the Temple District anyways. I did have a question. Wasn't Venif Sneaks Sneaks? Well, Venif Sneaks, uh, real name, uh, Anna. Yeah, Anna. Yes. So Bilar doesn't refer to them as Anna. Uh, Bilar refers to them as Anna while on the boat. However, the keeping up the so while it while that they are like in Great Forks. He refers to them as Venif Seek because that is the disguise that they are in. Okay. I, that's kind of why Elian was like companion, because it leaves it very vague, even though everybody in the room, you know, knows. Already knows. On. Yeah. It's just an easy way to, in public, be like, oh, where's your companion at? Like, it's a vague enough term to be like, oh, this could be the person you're traveling with, the person you're with, whatever. Okay. So then my plan is we're going to have a scene with Elian. Tarali and Idris, and then you two are going to split, and anyone who wants to go go with uh, Tarali and the Tyrants uh, to the Temple District can go there, and anyone who wants to go talk with Elian and Venif Seek can go there. Sound good? Zeke, front and center. Uh, what do I roll for disguise? Intelligence and larceny. You don't have to go in disguise, Brett. You are Resh Ferris. You're fine. Yeah, I'm just going to go as myself this time. I got to save the Zeke uh, stuff for when I have to be actually in hiding. Right? You don't want that. Pay me for those clothes you stole. I gave them back. Remember, I folded them up and gave them back to you. Rental's a thing. You should have said something when I gave them back to you. Too long ago now. You'll need them again. I'm at my own house now. I can get clothes when I want them. You were at your house when you stole my clothes. I'm at my house house. Okay, so as you guys uh, split off, uh, the slightly the the slightly taller, slightly buffer form of Idris, the noonday stranger, uh, kind of comes up, and uh, as it, uh, Elian and Tarali are heading on out, and kind of like waves to you all, and just goes, ah. 
general uh Elian and kind of like does like a uh, a nice little like ba- uh quick bow. Uh I I was hoping that maybe we might uh chat over some things. I found a a, a very good um uh, local uh local food temple in the center of the city if you guys wanted to uh join me. That sounds delightful. I'm heading towards the temple area, so that would work. Fantastic. You're going to love this place. The noodles look like little spears. It's wonderful. Always down for some good noodles. So you guys head on through Chiroscuro. Uh Like I said before, most of the crime families, uh, Manners and stuff are kind of in the northern area. They're they're a kind of bastion of uh, I don't want to say modesty, but like they they are. Uh, did they say north or did I say west? No, it's 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 north. Uh, they they are like this nice, like rich estate that is kind of surrounded by. Well, let's be honest, kind of like slums, but they also the crime family kind of provides a very necessary service for uh, the horror folk in town uh, in that being like protection money and everything. And they, as you all know, actually protect people. They are not dicks. They are not. It's not actually it's not a racket. It's actually a service that they provide their family, their family. And here in Great Forks, it is uh, much easier to gain protection uh, from uh, from slavers and the like that would mistreat their people. Uh, there are still people here who are actually enslaved, but they are not Treated forced down. at they are not forced at the whip to go and harvest from the fields of opium or from the fields of poppy and marijuana and tobacco uh, on the outskirts of the city. They are treated as well as anyone who is owned can be treated, which is to say they do not have their freedom, but they do not lack for comfort. It is a weird paradox that others would find disturbing. But here... The status quo has not been sh- sh- shooken up yet. Uh, moving from the northern area of the city uh, into the center, uh, which is the temple district, uh, the streets become much cleaner. They are paved with stones. Uh, they are paved with uh, almost literal like metals and uh, places of uh, and small uh, small marble. Uh, statues uh, kind of dot the way. It is for a native of Great Forks like uh, well, like Ferris, who is not here currently. Um, it is easy to dodge the little temples that have sprung up. But for Elian and Tarali, who are not natives, it is harder to move about without uh, bumping a knee or knocking into someone or uh, accidentally interrupting a procession of some kind. Um, Great Forks is a city of gods on earth uh, on, I'm sorry, of gods on creation seeking worship as prayer is to gods. What food is to mortals and what better way to pray to a God of cooking than to eat their own food, right? Going deeper in the, uh, you all find a temple restaurant essentially that Idris has pointed out. And he kind of like runs up ahead and hops over a small, uh, a a small temple to a small, uh, uh, earth God and kind of, uh, points at it and just kind of goes, look, look, this is, this is, this is where it is. It's the, uh, Okay, so he he points at this sign, and it looks like uh, it looks like a cup that is overflowing with uh, large, uh, thick noodles, with large, thick noodles uh, that has like this uh, aromatic uh, like like uh, smell lines coming off of it, aromatic lines coming off of the uh, 
the, the, the cup of noodles, and you can see that it says Udon Fod Cup. Uh, so he, he points at uh, the, the, the sign the, for Udon Fod Cup. Fod Cup. This is going to be this is such a fucking tongue twister. He points at the sign. He says, yeah, I hear that the... Uh, I hear that one of the uh, the, the 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 local uh, cooking gods uh, runs this place. He's the uh, god of uh, of uh, of thick uh, thick noodles, I think. Saucy nudes. Yeah, something like that. But like they're they're always shaped like uh, shaped like spears. I can't remember his name, but you know he. I'm sure the guy inside will remember his name. Okay, so anyway, really good place. One of the one of the other guys in the tyrants told me about this. So like. We're gonna we're gonna trust him, cause it's cause it's the old guy. Can't remember his name. Uh, General, do you remember his name? It's a good well, name. Who's he talking to? He's talking You're to you. General. He's a, General, do you remember his name? It was uh v, the 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 old guy who's your second in command. Uh, v, 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 Vinny. Vinny. One. Yeah, Vanali. Ah, uh, yeah, Vanali. Vanali said this place is great. Okay. Um So come on. Uh it's on me. I got a I got a little bit of money uh, after uh after the boss paid me. <laughs> I'll I'll treat y'all, you know. So you guys come in and he and like the the tables are wooden uh wooden uh bench seats. It is kind of a hole in the wall kind of place it it doesn't have the same uh feel as uh, as the desert basilisk did but the smell there is delightful he sits down and he kind of like orders uh orders a cup for him and then you know lets you guys order whatever that you guys want uh as if so long as it is noodle flavored uh or noodle adjacent they probably have it and then finally, uh, sitting down, he he looks to uh, looks to Elian. Just goes, "Bet you didn't think that you'd see me now, did you?" Uh, honestly, no. I as bad as it may sound, I asked the others not to let me know where you went for safety. No, no, that makes sense. I mean, you know, you had to keep me and my safe. You know, if if we had uh. If you had known and someone had asked, you know, you, you can't help but tell the truth. That's just kind of how you are. I don't have a good enough reason to lie. It's just a waste of time. It doesn't show any kind of respect. I mean, if you don't talk to them, is it a lie? <laughs> but in essence, your old name is gone. I don't know where that got left. So I don't know where that person is. And you are the noonday stranger. Yeah, that's uh that that's that's the plan. That's how it's uh supposed to be. It uh it took me a little bit to remember, but yeah, when uh when I got uh I don't even touched, I guess. That's the only thing that was in my head. Oh kid. No. He he kind of chuckles and kind of looks to Trolley and just goes, yeah, but uh, your friend here kind of kind of saved us. You know, uh, we were stuck in the. Uh, in the tower, like you all wanted us to be waiting for a way to slip out and it never showed. So instead of leaving us to rot, maybe be found out by uh, that wild hunt, you know. The general showed up, and, you know, she she let us out. Charlie does good work, and I appreciate that about her. I'm also, I'm also real glad that we didn't have to fight at the port. That definitely would have been interesting, considering. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw uh, Divine's eye... Twitching as soon as he saw Jolin. So I don't think that would have fared well one way or the other. 
No, if if Divine had let his temper get the best of him, it would have been it would have been bad. As much grief as I can give Ricky for his mouth and his temper, um, I didn't expect him to step up the way he did. And that was uh refreshing. Uh the noodles, uh the, the udon gets delivered in the, the nice pho broth. Uh, so it's, it's all kind of like cooking and, uh, together and it's, it's steaming and delightful and it, uh, the noonday stranger begins to, uh, dig in as well. And you can see that the, uh, as it, he said that the noodles are in fact, look like they have like little spear tips on the end and kind of like slurps and goes, yeah, well, you know, the slumbering hounds always, always down to fight for his family. Me too. I'm all anytime that my family fights, you know, I'm I'm there 100 percent. I just. I don't like it when the y'all fight each other. Elian's going to. Give him a little bit of a weird look. What do you mean when we all fight each other? Well, like and kind of like slurps up an, uh, a noodle a little bit. While we were on the trip through the scavenger lands, there were a couple uh couple of the uh the guys a couple of the new guys in the tyrants who uh joined up with me they uh they got to fighting each other and you know I kind of consider the tyrants like my like my second family at this point and they were you know they were button heads about something I just and you see that he gets kind of like this distant look he kind of goes there's like this you ever have like a a feeling in the pit of your stomach that like like something's going to drop out. And if it does, you're going to drop with it. To a degree. Yes. I I had that once or twice on the, on the way up here. It's not a, it's not a good feeling. Well, the good thing about the tyrants is, uh, they're all family. So you don't have to worry about any of the fighting ever being too bad. He he nods to Tarali. Yeah, I I learned that pretty quick, but the first time that it happened, it was really jarring. It's like uh it's like how you don't expect like certain kind of like jokes from new friends when that they get more comfortable with you. Like when the like when I first joined up with with the family, you know, it took me a little bit to get used to Ricky and Divine's sense of humor. It was, you know, a little crass if it makes you feel any better i still don't understand their humor sometimes either wait they have humor occasionally yes fascinating yeah it's it's interesting though i i've the you know we were were always taught that the the power that i have that and that uh, Bolar's companion, uh, Anna, I think he called her, um, has is supposed to be evil. But can I be honest with both of you? I, I don't feel any different than I did besides like being able to punch and jump a lot better. Well, you do certainly look different. He nods and smiles and kind of uh, cocks his head over to Tarali. Yeah, but joining the military will do that to a guy. Yeah, and changing looks doesn't always change who someone is, you know? You can get prettier, but there could still not be a thought behind those eyes. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not claiming that he's any different than he used to be. I'm just saying you are different in some ways, but still the same in others. And the way you're the same in the others is important. Always truthful. That hey, I mean, that's what the boys say about you, you know. They might say that the uh the slumbering hound can't tell a lie, and I don't know if that's true or not. But what I do know is true is that uh is that the resolute kraken will always speak what's on their mind. And kind of like finishes his bowl in like a deep, uh, like loud, like slurping noise and like sets his bowl down. And then just kind of 
raises an eyebrow to the mention of the name because this is probably the first time they've heard it. Yeah, did, didn't you know that's what the, the, the boys and the tyrants and uh, a lot of the other people are calling you? No, I had not heard that yet. I'm generally not around the ty- in Titans. Wow. The, the tyrants very much. Um, unless they're out and about traveling with us and they were on a different ship this go around. That's fair. You know, wor- word of everything that you all did in look shy and uh, coming up the coming up the, the river uh, did reach us while we were dealing with some other stuff. But yeah, it, between that, your work on the uh, the case after uh, after calibration and even everything before, like, you know, you've always stuck by your gun. So they. They 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 all just kind of started giving each other giving giving you a nickname and I gotta tell you it's kind of spread, uh, Elian. Uh, there might be rumors of you like all the way up through the scavenger lands now, thanks to me and the boys. Uh, Elian's just gonna sip their tea and put it down. Well, that's hopefully going to be a boon to aid us with things. Hopefully. I believe in you. That's appreciated. He uh, sets down uh, some change on the table and looks over to the guy uh, at, at the uh, at the end and goes, "Hey, spears like grass. Can you get over here? I, I brought the person that you wanted to see." Thank you for taking the time to enjoy our show. If you liked what you heard, why not leave a review or tell a friend about us? It helps get the good word out about the work we put into this show. If you wanted to ask us any questions, you can contact us through Twitter at A Pair of Dice Lost or email at A Pair of Dice Lost at gmail.com. The theme song for this game is Dragon Dance by Raphael Crux, used under a Creative Commons license. And for making it this far, I saw that cool thing you did, so have some stunt dice. You would need to you would need to do a lot of stuff to get a warp strider. Like a lot, a lot of stuff. Theft. Theft is one of them. But also you have to know how to pilot it, and that's the whole thing. Unless you just take drugs about it, because we found out that works. That's some Gundam bullshit right there. Oh, don't know how to do this? Just do some drugs. You know? Just 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 put the spike into your cerebral spine. And you'll figure it out. Look, it worked in the other canon for for this world. Uh, drugs worked. I'm pretty sure that's actually just also the plot of Iron Blooded Orphans. So, I think that is also the plot of G Gundam. Yeah. Anyway. Let's just anyway. plot of Max. <laughs> You're not wrong. So anyway, um, cloaked figure does make an entrance. It's just the Scarlet Empress. It's fine. Oh, yeah, exactly. You're okay. One moment. I need to literally look at a map. <laughs> the map that's right behind you? Uh, I actually moved it close. I actually moved it closer to uh, to my desk. Oh, wait, no, no. They already had that information because I d- already marked it down. Never mind. Scratch that from the record. Cody, did it's you just- forget her... I have to know, Cody, did you forget her name or is this intentional? My man, I didn't even learn her name. Oh, okay. That's so funny to me. Her her name is Vita. V-I-T-A. Yeah. I take it back. I did learn her name because I remember it by remembering P.S. Vita. <laughs> but I couldn't remember. I just remember that she's the exigent of the god of aviation. Yeah. You are correct. That is exactly what that she is. That bitch Vanilleth. If it can, if it can fly, she can make it. Uh, out of character, I might actually have a. Uh, this is going to sound. This is going to sound absolutely wild. I might actually have like an exalted adventure module for that. Wild, right? I like the party. 
I'll uh I'll I'll look through I'll look through my uh my shelf uh after game. Don't you say that to me in that tone of voice, peasant. <laughs> oh. Uh, you know uh how Ferris almost the died. DM You're next. This. <laughs> You're next, Cody. You're next. When doesn't Cody try to martyr himself in a game? This one? Yeah. yeah, it's literally been this one because I think I told him don't do it. That's been yeah. Divine's theme to not do that. I'm a martyr, Ricky. <laughs> Ricky already tried with uh, his relationship choice. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just drop that in here out of nowhere, sir. <laughs> it was great, though. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> gotta do it to him. I say we get a dartboard and throw a dart at it and go from there. How about someone rolls me a d5? How about I roll a d5? I was like, how about you roll a d5? Okay, it's gonna go from the top to the bottom, excluding me, obviously, and Craig. Because we can't have Craig in here doing stuff, so... One, two. God damn it. Uh, it's going to be Torelli. Yeah. Uh, Ricky might learn how to read, but Jackie still don't know how to count. Oh, you're right. I thought it was a D6. I thought we had six. You're right. Yeah, well, d- technically we do because it's me, but also like. Uh, I don't yeah. count. I can't just have a scene with no, myself. No, no, no. I don't count. I can't count. So. Oh, okay. You can have a scene with yourself. You can describe, but like, pan off to the side of what mo- bu- bullshit Moy is doing. Yeah. Uh, I I guess that's me, isn't it? I mean, if you want to join in as a tyrant, you can. <laughs> You're an honorary one. Do I need to put on the disguise? Do you want me to put on the disguise? Totally up to you. I'm definitely going to clip that later. I want you to know, Britt. Clip which thing? Do you want me to put on the disguise? New sound bit? New sound bit? Mm. New sound bit. My home house. Not her summer house. Her (laughs) actual house. (laughs) Yeah, she does technically have a summer house. Yeah. And a winter house. And a spring house. And a fall house. And an autumn house. I have a... Oh, are we just... All in an- autumn from two different things, then? Yes. Correct. Two different They're homes. very different. She's got houses She's got on houses. houses at home. <laughs> got homes on homes on homes. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Fuck, I haven't thought this far ahead. Uh, give me a second to get a name. 10,000 Stakes? Huh? Huh? Uh, we, already have, we already have a reference to 10,000 Stakes. <laughs> But isn't that who Minami follows? It is. Follows being a very loose term in this case. What type of restaurant is it? A noodle one? Yes, it's a noodle one. I mean, I, I don't I don't hate Michaela's suggestion, the Fall King. <laughs> oh man, that's very good. You Udon Fu Cup. You done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I like actually, it. I don't think we should use that. Uh, can can you spell that out for me, Cody? Okay. That's how I assume it would be spelled. Oh, okay. There'd be a D in there. Can't forget the D. Well, I mean, the D, that's not an Udon, but... Uh... That's what udon is, right? It's mm-hmm. thick noodles, right? Okay. Huh? Huh? It's pretty good, right? Pretty good. I hear. I hear that one of the. Uh, why am I doing a Ricky voice? <laughs> hey. He can't help it. You can't be a tough guy and not copy Ricky. He does have separate intimacies for everyone. Every one of the captains, because he does love you all in his own way. Show me where the sun god touched you. (laughs) 
He, just look at looks, all this. Just look at all the sunburned marks on him. You'll know where the sun god touched him. I pull out a doll I stole from Unbound Ashen Mountains kid. He, he just pulls out a bottle. Of Sunny, he, he just pulls out a bottle of Sunny D. I will say I, I didn't. I don't have. I don't. What what temper? Are you are you are, there, you, Cody? are you here with us? I thought we all went along. Oh. Uh, I thought I mean, it if was you just want to, I, 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 didn't, and, I didn't go. And uh, the Noonday Stranger. I thought that. That's why I thought you were just making side comments. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Leave it to Divine to try to get some free nudes out of something. Anything to save a buck. I thought Ricky said he was hungry. Yeah, but I was just trying to. I'm, I'm not there. He's he wanted. He wanted. He wanted to find the god of falafel. Go oh, well. Uh, never mind then. I'd be following pretty Ricky. That's my sweater. I was like, is he just making comments or is Divine actually there? Because <laughs> that's relevant. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to be there, Cody, that's totally fine. I'm not going to tell you no. I was just like, Are, is he there? His voice is always in our head because we hear it constantly. You know, it's Schrodinger's exigent. <laughs> Brendan, for, for my out of character, like, Internal screaming. <laughs> Did he get two points of limit while on his way here? He got more than he. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the his limit track is, but it's definitely more than two. Okay, but he had two instances of where his his limit triggers were tested, or his uh, uh, intimacies were tested. I guess I should say. Yes, yes, he has had some times where that intimacies were tested, or possibly a limit trigger was tested, but. Fun, st- funny story about Exalted. Uh, even Solars don't know what a limit trigger is. Yeah, and I just I had that moment of like, we don't have that feeling as Dragon Blooded, but I, as Christina, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> no, Cody, you can't say that. <laughs> you're, not playing Lenny any- you're not playing Lenny anymore, Cody. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Let Lenny go. Let him go off into the great beyond. Oof. Okay. Um. 